So you take your Trebek 3650 apart and you need to do some synchros because you're having a time, bad time shifting. Let's go over uh, checking your synchros and seeing what's good and what's bad. There are two different types of synchros in the Tremec 3650. We have the three piece, first and second gear, and we have the one piece, third, fourth, fifth, and reverse. First thing to do would be visually check. As you can see, the difference between these two, the one on the left is absolutely toast. All the friction material is flaking off or gone in places versus the one on the right. A good way to go about testing these, I'm gonna use the bad one versus the good one for an example. Uh, this would be first and second gear, so you got the three pieces. So the synchro ring will drop down in there and then the inner ring will match up. Now the inner and outer are locked together, so there's no, there's only a little bit of movement there. But the, the friction comes from when you're spinning the synchro ring inside of the two and how much resistance there is to that says a lot about it and right now I'm not really pushing down but I'm turning it and it's pre turning pretty freely. I could push down a little bit and it gets a little bit of grip but not a whole lot. Now if I take that one, that one out and put in what appears to be the better one Now, I, can, I can't even hardly twist it and I'm not even putting any pressure down. So that to me would say that this synchro is still in good shape and could be reused. Now for the rest of the synchros that are not first and second, same thing, we can inspect the friction material on the back side if it's chunked out or worn down quite a bit. Uh, that will immediately tell us whether or not it's a good synchro still. Same thing, we can grab one of the friction surfaces for that synchro and we're just going to mate them together and see how easily they turn. This one, I mean, I'm not putting, I'm just trying to turn it sideways but keep it pushed in. I'm not applying a lot of direct pressure to it and it's got some good resistance and if I push down at all on it, it locks right up which is exactly what we're looking for because that's how it matches up the speeds between gears. So this one I wouldn't be opposed to using and we can just kind of check them all. This one I can spin a little bit easier but it's still not bad. I don't know if I've got a bad one. I usually chuck these things as soon as they're bad and to keep anything around that's actually decent yet. It is worth noting that if you're checking individual gears, I do suggest checking them to whichever gear surface they are mated to so that you can check against any various uh, possible differences in machining. Uh, these surfaces are not really a wear surface even though they contact, they are the friction surface. It's just they are so much harder than the actual friction material of the synchro. The synchros usually wear, always wear out before the steel surface will of the gear. An additional item to check is even if you're getting good friction in between, it would be the size of this gap between the synchro and the gear face. That gap right there can make a big difference about how much life is left. So if you are got a brand new one and it's sitting and it might have say an eighth inch gap, versus one that's almost touching. That one that's almost touching doesn't have hardly any life left. And even though it is making friction and could be used, you probably want to replace it. And that's a quick way to check the synchros in your transmission to see whether they're worth reusing or not. If you've ever had to assemble one of these and get the ball bearing in there and then try to position all the parts and get in a press to put the taper bearing and all that stuff on it can be a huge pain in the butt. One thing that really helps with that is putting a little grease on it. With just a little bit of grease you can get it to stick. 
put some in the hole, get it on there, and now that ball bearing will stay there as you position all the rest of the parts and put them in place. Not all of these rings are the same. Uh, of the four of them, two are flat on one side and have the tapers on the other. The other two have tapers on both sides. While they do look like this might not be centered and be one way or the other, I believe they are interchangeable. There's no top or bottom on the two that have pointed ends on both sides because they sit in the same place naturally when assembled. The ones with only a single pointed side are for reverse and fifth gear. So you just need to make sure that you're putting those two on in the correct direction so that you're getting the proper engagement. Otherwise it could be difficult with this flat edge when it's got a synchro that's trying to line up with to find its spot. It's gonna be much more difficult than if it's on the tapered edge where it can drop right in. There are five snap rings in this transmission. One that I already have assembled is significantly larger and that goes on to hold second gear and its assembly on the main shaft. The second one that's already assembled, which is a very hard to tell between the four that are left, is for holding third gear onto the front of the main shaft. How I was able to tell them apart was by taking a caliper and measuring them. This one's an eighth inch. There's 94 thou, 94 thou, and the one that holds third gear on is also 94 thou. So where it came into telling them apart is this thicker one that's an eighth inch goes with holding fifth gear on it's the only one that has a groove wide enough to take it on the main shaft. So that kind of eliminates that. Then with measuring the other ones, I'm just going across the center diameter and I have inch 360 and inch 330. I do believe this 60 is slightly bent out of shape. At least it looks like it is when I'm you know, looking at it, but it also has a little bit larger OD on the diameter, so that'll come into determining which one's there. Uh, the ring that's already assembled on third gear measured 1440 across the inside, and the shaft there is 1400 versus where these two go. One will be on the, the main shaft. Uh, up here for the speedo gear and the other one will be on the back of the secondary shaft holding fifth gear. And just to confirm your third gear snap ring which is just inside of here this is the thrust bearing race on the outside of it so that snap ring should go on there snap in and then it should have just a little bit of press fit so that you know you kind of got to force it but this race which is just flat on both sides should snap down tight over the top of it and be held in there properly so that it doesn't fall out as long as you got the transmission apart it's a good idea to upgrade the shift fork pads uh, these aftermarket ones are bronze, so they're stronger than just the factory plastic ones. They're super easy to remove, you can just kind of pop them off. And then the bronze ones, depending on how well they fit, you should be able to just uh, get them started and then hammer them on. These ones might be a little bit snug. There, just kind of get it started, and then if you have to, you can tap them on there. 
Now these are a lot stronger than the plastic ones. They can wear and break still, but usually if you're getting to that point, you have a problem with your clutch engagement or disengagement if that happens. Now sometimes these brass shift fork pads are a bit snug and don't quite want to drop down in there. And that's due to just variation in the aluminum itself. They are machined, but apparently there's some mismatch there. You can see a little bit of rub marks there where I kind of forced it on. Uh, this will wear off of there in fairly short fashion, or you can always uh, buff these a little bit till they slide on nice. Uh, just for comparison, you know, here's the reverse one and drops right down there. It's got a, I mean, nothing to it. Kind of up to you what you want to do there. I'm probably going to just buff the edges here a little bit till I got a nice fit because it'll make it easier putting together. And then I won't have that drag right away wearing once it gets running in the car. Another thing that you possibly want to do, especially if you go to an aftermarket shift fork, uh, these are the factory ones, so the roll pins have not proved to be a problem for me with the factory shift forks. However, uh, in my other transmission in the car, I have a billet 3-4 shift fork, and it typically looks, you know, billet. This is a 1-2 shift fork that I'm going to be putting in that other transmission. The problem is, is these will soak up more heat than the factory ones because they are a bit larger. And if you're road racing your car, it will generate enough heat where these roll pins come loose. So what I did to fix that problem, because it, the first time it happened, I put it back together and literally the next event, the same thing happened where the roll pin fell out while on track and I lost being able to shift into third and fourth. So what I did to fix that was I got everything lined up and I believe it was a quarter 20 tap that I ran through the billet shift fork and into the shaft until basically as far as I could reach with the tap and ran out of thread. And then I just took a, uh, like a button head style bolt and ran in there and tighten it down. There's enough clearance, you don't have any problems with that as far as movement and shifting in the transmission. And then just the matter of, because I was at the bottom end of the tap, it kind of jammed on the threads right at the bottom. And I also used Loctite, and since I did that, I haven't had a problem. All right, last but not least, when it comes to assembly, you got the 01 to 04 length, and then there's the 05 to 10 length. Both of these stick out past the bell housing flange to the engine. Uh, it's easiest to assemble this with starting with the bell housing sitting on the bench like this. However, they don't go in all the way because they hit the table. What I've done is I can put a two by four under each side and then I can actually set everything in there and it's easy to assemble all the gear sets and stuff that way. Or, what you could do, and what I might end up doing this next time around, is rather than uh, dealing with trying to balance the two by fours and spinning it around stuff, I'm just gonna drill a hole the size of the pilot bearing shaft area right into the bench. And then that way I can spin it all around while the, this is sitting right on the bench and I can position it however I want so that I can assemble it easily.